Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in the ShredderGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to be kicking this video off with news of Narve 23. This is also an article as well, so if you do prefer the written word, you can, of course, find it linked in the description of this video. This GPU has been spotted in Linux drivers, all but confirming the existence of this particular architecture. For those who have been longer-term viewers, you will know that back in August of this year, I first leaked the existence of this GPU. AMD internally are referring to Narve 23 as, quote, an NVIDIA killer, end quote and as the name implies, is based on the second generation of RDNA architecture from the company. There are precious few details known of the specifications of the GPU, however we can certainly speculate that it's going to be more than 64 compute units, given that we know that AMD will be facing stiff competition from NVIDIA next year. Now that the GPU has been spotted in the drivers for the first time, it all but confirms Narve 23 is indeed, well, a thing. The code was found by a forum goer on 3dcenter.org, however I'd also like to extend my thank you to Ronald, who is a staff member of the website, as he actually emailed me to let me know of the discovery, which was really cool of him. The code references several GPUs, including Narve 22 and Narve 23, plus as well a couple of light uh, GPUs as well, Narve 12 light, Narve 21 light. Unfortunately, specifications and details concerning these GPUs are not present in the drivers, which is definitely a really big shame. Now, Unfortunately, there are no specifications listed for either, for either excuse me, Narve 23 or Narve 22, so things are definitely up in the air regarding how these cards will perform. And what we are pretty certain of is that Ampere is going to launch in the first half of 2020. This has actually been confirmed by a couple of different people, not least of whom is Igor's lab. So, what we can essentially know is that AMD will be facing a lot of competition from NVIDIA. From Intel, we are pretty certain that the XE line of GPUs is going to stick to the mid-tier of performance. That's not knocking Intel or anything like that. I'm simply saying that, at least in the high end, AMD don't need to worry about Intel yet. At least if the rumours thus far are accurate. The rumour has it, though, with Ampere that it will double down on both ray tracing performance and also traditional rasterization performance. We can also presume that Narve 12 is going to launch either before or around the same time of Ampere. Unfortunately, we don't have an exact time frame for the launch of Ampere. However, I have been told that Narve 12 is most likely going to launch in the earlier part of 2020. There's also been, and I covered this a couple of days ago, a very curious update from Microsoft as well, as the company are updating DirectX 12 ray tracing support to Tier 1.1. This features numerous improvements that I discussed a couple of days ago, although honestly there is still a lot of uncertainty exactly what's changed, so hopefully we have more documentation on that pretty soon. One of those changes though is Execute Indirect, and this, from what we know, is going to allow the GPU to essentially adjust the number of rays being generated based upon what's going on in the GPU's pipeline and other criteria. I find this particularly of interest given what we know about the second generation of Narve architecture slash RDNA architecture. I first leaked that ray tracing support would be a a feature of the second generation of Narve back in March of this year. And then, of course, we've seen AMD confirm this with the ray tracing vision slide. I went much more into depth with this with my recent What I Think of Narve Architecture and AMD's Plans with Ray Tracing video, so I'll link that in the description of this video. But I do find the ray tracing vision slide extraordinarily interesting for several reasons. You can clearly see that the first generation of Narve appears to only support ray tracing in software, and 
from what we're hearing, there will be an update for Narve, uh, drivers anyway, by the end of this year, which allegedly is going to bring software ray tracing support to that particular architecture, although, once again, details are very sketchy. However, for the next generation, although it does state that it is, quote, select lighting effects for real-time gaming. I do wonder, then, if Narve is going to have less advanced ray tracing, perhaps focusing on ray tracing which is less taxing on the GPU. And this would make sense given the DX12 tier 1.1 ray tracing updates. Perhaps that's one of the reasons that uh, AMD have constructed the second generation of Narve how they have. Wow, that was a terrible sentence. But you get my point. Particularly given what we know about the next generation consoles, Microsoft have been rather boisterous boasting about uh, Scarlet's ray tracing support. And also rather recently, according to one of my sources, the next generation consoles will actually differ in how ray tracing is implemented. This isn't to say that PlayStation 5 won't have uh, uh, ray tracing support for graphics. Instead, I've been told that the Xbox Scarlet will have more advanced ray tracing for graphics compared to the PS5. Although, once again, performance figures are not provided, so it could be very negligible of a difference, or it could be pretty profound. I'm really looking forward to seeing what AMD are planning for next year in the GPU arena, and the same could also be said for both of their rivals. However, for me, one question is also on my lips, and that is what the timelines are for the releases for both Narve 12 and also the second generation architecture from the company. I know that Narve's original debut back in July was originally supposed to be earlier on in the year, but as I've said many times now, there were delays and uh, issues and eventually it got delayed and of course then launched at the same time as the third generation Ryzen. But these delays seem to have also impacted Narve 12, which we are pretty certain is a slightly different architecture compared to Narve 10 or Narve 14. The second generation also seems to have faced a delay as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the release dates are for the different GPUs in hindsight and exactly what changes and what has actually evolved. I would also be very curious to see if there's any incremental updates given what I just mentioned regarding slight changes it seems for Narve 12 compared to let's say Narve 10. And now we're going to be moving over to Renault because one of my sources has given me some insight into what AMD are planning for this particular APU. This is, as you can imagine, an exclusive, so thanks very much to my source who provided me this information. Renault, as we know, is an APU and is built on the 7NM process. We've also speculated that it is going to be using Vega based upon several leaked benchmarks as well as driver entries, and indeed the Vega GPU seems to have some enhancements based upon Narve. No, I don't mean on the compute units, instead on the display block. It is using a Narve-based display block. But there have been several questions regarding, let's say, the CPU core count for uh, Renault, and now I actually have some answers thanks to my source. My source told me that Renault will be up to 8 CPU cores, so that doesn't mean all models of Renault will be 8 CPU cores. However, it does go up to 8 CPU cores. I was told that Renault will see a cut in level 3 cache for its Zen 2 CPU cores. I wasn't told exactly how much of a cut it would be though. If you look at a standard 8 core CPU in the Ryzen 3000 lineup, it has of course 32 megabytes of level 3 cache total. So what could we see here? Perhaps what, 16 megabytes of level 3 cache? I wasn't told exactly why this cut is going to exist, but you can probably guess the reasons yourself. Not least of all is die space. Oh, and speaking of die, the other major difference with Renault is apparently it will be based on a monolithic die. 
This is something that you could probably guess, because uh, from what AMD said during the earlier part of this year, I, I think it was February, uh, February, perhaps January, actually I think it was January, there were statements by AMD that their current planned APUs anyway were going to be based on a monolithic process rather than chiplets. So here my source confirmed that yes, it will still retain the monolithic layout. As for other information, once again, Vega was mentioned. I was told it's 12 CU, and uh, as we all know, there are some enhancements with the Narve display block. It was also confirmed to me that we will see LP DDR4, which once again is something that we kind of knew anyway. So the big things that were new to me from this source were the fact that it was going to be a monolithic type, uh, die, excuse me, and also the fact that the level 3 cache would be cut. This is slightly off topic, but thinking about my analysis regarding the consoles, I do remember several times in the past that I predicted that we would see the level 3 cache uh, for the Zen 2 implementation for consoles also cut. And one of my sources had also told me that in regards to the Zen 2 CPUs, he called them Zen 2 Plus, they would also be optimized for lower power consumptions. So I do wonder if there is some um, similarities between the implementation of Zen 2 for Renault and also the next generation consoles, given, let's say, the PS5 is also an 8-core, 16-thread CPU and runs up to 3.2 GHz, of course, clock frequencies notwithstanding here. But I do predict that we will also see a cut and level 3 cache for the consoles as well. So I wonder if that's a similar strategy to what AMD will be implementing for Renault. That is just pure speculation, however. And while we're on the subject of AMD, I might as well squeeze a bit of news in concerning the RX 5500 XT, as we have yet more filings on various government websites which indicate that this is actually a thing. This time it is from the EAE Union, or if you prefer, the Euro-Asian Economic Commission. These filings have taken place just, well, today, actually. And they are on behalf of a gigabyte. There are a plethora of different filings here, so I'm not going to read them all out because I will be here until Christmas. But you can clearly see a couple of references to the RX 5500 XT. For those who are uninitiated, the RX 5500 XT is said to be very similar to the RX 5500, which hasn't actually been made available yet. And so we don't even know what the pricing of the GPU is. However, there are a couple of differences, primarily coming down to the clock frequency of the GPU core, and the second difference being the number of compute units, uh, with 22 being enabled for the RX 5500 vanilla slash non-XT variant, and of course the XT variant featuring the full uh, 24 uh, uh, compute units uh, on the Narve 14 die. And finally, I'd like to squeeze in a bit of discussion for some updates concerning Intel's XE slash Tiger Lake slash Gen 12 slash whatever you would like to call it. And that is that Intel have submitted the last changes for the Linux 5.5 DRM driver. This was spotted over at forenix.com. So these updates are for the i915 Direct Rendering Manager driver. And there has been an awful lot of things discovered regarding Tiger Lake slash Gen 12 slash Intel XZ. Oh, so exhausting to say. Um, we've seen lots of stuff including Jasper Lake support, uh, Intel as XE multi-GPU rendering potentially, or it might just be for compute, but essentially this would mean that you could have multiple Intel XE GPUs in the system, or maybe have a discrete GPU based on XC, and this could work in conjunction with a Gen 12 based uh, iGPU on a CPU to uh, offload some work. It's not quite clear yet whether this would be uh, strictly for compute, so more like machine learning or what have you, or whether this would also be applicable for games. As we know, at least on the uh, Windows side of things with DirectX 12, and actually you could also say Vulkan as well, which of course would be uh, operating system agnostic. That's the word I was looking for, operating system, very complex uh, technical term there. Um, yeah, both of those have essentially 
I wouldn't say completely removed uh, multi-GPU support, but it's certainly on the way out. But anyway, today's pull request has added several new features, not least of all half-float frame buffer support and other preparations for discrete XC, but the bulk of these patches have focused around Tiger Lake slash Generation 12. It's still very early for us to know what Intel's plans are for XC, um, it's most likely that we are going to be seeing those GPUs target the mid-range or lower. However, that's based upon very little solid information other than some leaked driver information and a couple of murmurs in the industry. And obviously, murmurs in the industry can A, be wrong, and driver entries, well, who knows that two days later we didn't see a new entry pop up with like two or three times the number of execution units. Uh, we, we, it's still very early to know that. However, from what I'm gathering, uh, Generation 12 slash XE is going to focus on the mid-range or lower, and then the generation after that, Generation 13, I suppose, is going to be targeting the high-end, bleeding-edge graphics from both NVIDIA as well as AMD. I've also had it whispered to me that Intel are mostly going after... Uh, NVIDIA's market share in the server market for GPU computing, but we'll just have to wait and see what the product stack is really like. With any luck at all, you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then of course, leave a like on the video because it helps us out a ton, and also subscribe to the channel for much more content. You can also find a written version of this video as an article, which is found in the description of this video. So if you do prefer the written word, well, by golly gosh, I've got you covered. I'd also like to thank you very much, of course, for watching the video. And also thanks very much to all of the supporters who have been feeding me this information. It is greatly appreciated. And with all of that said, I'm going to wish you an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.